In Blender 5.0, a new constraint was added, the Geometry Attribute Constraint. This constraint allows you to directly manipulate an object's location, rotation, and scale using attributes from geometry. To access an attribute, simply put in its name, data type, and domain. The sample index will tell you which element on the domain to sample from. The supported data types are vector, which affects position, quaternion, which affects rotation, and 4x4 matrix, which affects the entire transform, location, rotation, and scale. Supported domains are point, edge, face, face corner, spline, and instance. The supported geometry types are meshes, curves, point clouds, and instances. A quick example of this is using the position attribute from this plane to move this cube. So, in this case, I'm going to add in the geometry attribute constraint, and we can see that the position is the default attribute name. If we go and select our target object, we can see that the cube gets moved to position 1, 2, 3, and 4. But this is in global space. If we want this to be local to the object, simply check Offset with Target Transform. And now we can see that the cube moves along with the target object. By default, the constraint object's mix mode is set to replace, but if you set it to before original or after original, the object's previous transform will be accounted for, though it'll be matrix multiplied in different orders. A practical example of this constraint is in this old project of mine, where I wanted to attach a camera to the top of this little crab. But the problem is that these are instances controlled by geometry nodes. Previously, we would have to use triangle parenting, but this was a bit of a hassle. Now, with the geometry attribute constraint, we could go to our camera over here and use the geometry attribute constraint, set it to be a 4x4 matrix on the instance domain, and use the instance transform as the attribute. Now, if we select our object, we can see that our camera has moved, but we need to enable offset with target transform because our target object is not at zero. Now we can see that our camera follows along with our crab, but it is not oriented the way we want it to be. So let's go and set the mix mode to be before original. Now we can see that the camera will remember its previous transform. Now we can go and orient it the way we want. And that is a basic overview of the geometry attribute constraints. Now, since this is a new constraint partly developed by myself, there are bound to be a few bugs and glitches with it. If you find any, please report them. This constraint was originally made to add a level of communication between geometry nodes and the object level, but it is not limited to that. I'm very eager to see how people use it, especially with attributes from other programs. Thank you all for watching, and I will see you next time. Have a good one.